Good evening, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Celtic have a new centre half, and the transfer rumour mill is beginning to ramp up as we near the transfer deadline in a couple of weeks' time. So tonight we're going to look at the new boy and all of the names linked with the club in the last few days. We'll start with Lager Bielka, though, 23 year old Swedish centre half. Takes a number four uh, that Carol Starfelt has just vacated and replaces Starfelt, um, if not directly in terms of his place in the team, then in terms of squad numbers and depth in that centre back area. Um, I think Lager Bielka looks like a similar mould to Navrotsky, um, similar profile, comfortable on the ball. Looks like a decent passer. Again, you've only got the YouTube clips to go on at this stage. It'll be good to see him in the flesh and see him play 90 minutes uh, for Celtic. But you can see um, that he looks like a centre-half that will fit the mould of a Brendan Rodgers team. I think he could even have an opportunity to get some game time relatively soon with the injury to Cameron Carter-Vickers. There's no official news yet from Pataudry on Sunday, but it looked like a hamstring tear. Brendan Rodgers said they would look at it. He was doing a wee bit of limping going off the pitch. Um, so we await news about how long Carter Vickers is going to be out for, but it could present an opportunity for Lager Bielka to get some minutes. I know Stephen Welsh came in and played well second half on Sunday, um, but I do think we're a lot stronger now in that position. And I think now, moving forward in the next couple of weeks, we've got to look at the other areas of the team that we have to improve so that we can end the window and go, this has been a good window we're in a stronger position, uh, we're not weaker than the squad we had coming into this window because we've obviously lost Aaron Moy, Jota and Carol Starfelt um, and we've made six new signings but I think the feeling around most of the signings is there's no one that stands out as someone who immediately improves the first team. Um, so I think it's important to get Lager Bielka in just to close off the, the depth needed at centre-half um, I think it probably spells the end for, for Liam Scales. He's been linked to a, a move back to Aberdeen. Kobayashi, who I think has currently got an injury, um, doesn't seem to be part of Brendan Rodgers' plans as well. So there is lots of numbers in there, but I do think we'll see one or two exits uh, in that area of the squad in the next couple of weeks as well. There's been so many names linked with the club in the last few days. Um, I want to start with Daniel Pudence. 27-year-old Portuguese winger from Wolves. I'm sure a lot of people know him, familiar with him, um, having played in the English Premier League. I remember him when he was at Olympiacos. Daniel Pedence is the calibre of player that you're looking for Celtic to bring in in the summer. He is the type of player that is an adequate replacement for Jota. He's the type of player that would excite the supporters and I think excite his teammates as well. Um, Wolves are looking for around £12 million. But the, the talk is that there's room for negotiation on that because Wolves find themselves in a sticky position with financial fair play. Um, he's fallen out of favour at Wolves and there's an opportunity there. Uh, they're looking to offload him and Celtic are interested. Hopefully we can do a deal. Whether we can go to 12 million, I would severely doubt it. But as I say, Podence is the player of the right quality that would immediately improve the first team. That's the key. That's the thing I think we haven't done so far this summer transfer window. We haven't brought someone in and everybody goes, he immediately improves the team. Lots of players that improve the squad, lots of players, similar profile, similar age, um, sell-on potential. Pudence at 27 probably doesn't have another big transfer in him if he was to come to Celtic, so I don't think there's much room for the club to make profit. But at 27, we would be getting him in his peak years. I really rate Pedence as a player, so I hope there's something in that. I hope it is something the club pursue, and I hope we can get a deal done there. Also in that position, though, we have been linked with Ryan Fraser this week. Again, out of favour at Newcastle. I think there's much more question marks over bringing Ryan Fraser to the club. He's slightly older than Pedence. His injury history really isn't great, um, and I know there's been a few fallouts with Eddie Howe, um, particularly one at Newcastle. He's currently, I think he's training um, with the reserves at the minute. Absolutely not had a look in recently. And they're looking again to offload him, but I think there's plenty of question marks over Ryan Fraser. I think Brendan Rodgers could make it work. If anyone could make it work, I would say it would be Rodgers. Scott Sinclair was at Aston Villa, um, not playing very much, out of favour. 
totally overlooked. Um, but when he brought him to Celtic in 2016, it turned out to be an excellent signing. Maybe something like that could be done. Um, but I don't think, I certainly don't think, going by the reaction from the supporters on social media, that that's the kind of signing that would excite the support. I think there's there's far too many question marks there. We'll see how that one develops. Um, I think we definitely need to add a winger. Yang has looked brilliant, but after losing Jota, we come back to it. We come back to that same issue. How do we improve the first eleven? Um, and to do that, we need to replace Jota, and we need to replace him with a player of quality. And I don't think every signing. I know the club's model is to buy young players under the age of twenty four that have sell on potential that we can make massive profit from. But I don't think one hundred percent of your signings have to be under twenty four. Um, I think you can make one or two exceptions to really go and and make a statement and improve your starting eleven. Um, I think you can go and get one or two players in their peak that you have to pay that bit extra for, um, and they should return their transfer fee not because you sell them on for a profit, but because you've got them here in their peak years, um, and they you get performances out of them at the highest level in terms of winning titles, in terms of Champions League, in terms of making progress in Europe. Um, I think one or two additions like that is absolutely fine. It doesn't break the model. Um, I don't think it's going to put us any financial risk when it's only one or two players at that level. Um, but I don't think Ryan Fraser is that player that can take us to that level, that next level at this stage in his career, whereas I think Pudence could be. Other names linked in the last couple of days include Eric Dyer. I, I could not believe when I seen Eric Dyer. I didn't actually see anything official, by the way. It was just pure uh, Twitter talk. But um, I can't see Eric Dyer coming to Celtic in any way, shape or form. I think that's this kind of rumour similar to the Scott McTominay one early in the summer that's just never going to happen. Um, even if it was to be a loan deal, he'll be on huge wages. Um, and I don't really see a place for him in the squad um, could it be as a as a deep line midfield player possibly but I, I just don't think there's anything to it I can't see it happening at all we were also linked with non left back Quentin Merlin who's rated at £7 million that again is, is, a, is a step up from the players we've been uh, linked to all summer in terms of maybe the league they're coming from but also the transfer fee um, that their, their club is demanding he could improve the left back area I think the left back area particularly when you think about European football is one that we can improve I don't know if this is going to materialise in this window £7 million is, is a lot um, I think if we, were to go, if we were to go and get Pedence and then go and get Merlin um, that would definitely be a big layout for the club that would be your two marquee signings or as close to it as we're going to get uh, this summer, but I don't know how much is in that. Um, although I think left back is an area that, that we could improve on, and it's going to be interesting to see how Greg Taylor's place in the team develops this season. He was he was suited to that and Postecoglou system. He took to that inverted fullback role really really well. But going back to the more conventional overlapping fullback, staying wide, um, is that going to suit his game? I think that's yet to be seen. Um, so left back could be an area that we're looking at but I'm encouraged that the rumours and the talk seems to have ramped up a bit and we've had links with the likes of Pedence, even the likes of Merlin because it, it seems like a different market to the, the players we've brought in already this summer and as I say, yes, it's key for the club to stick to their model not to overhaul it, not to start spending fortunes on players with no sell-on value but um, I think it's really important for us to go and try and improve the first 11 and if that means buying players um, above your usual fee but also above your, your target age range I think that's absolutely fine if they're going to improve the starting 11. Also today there was a story that the club are looking to extend the contracts of Rio Hatate and Liel Abada. Just a quick one on Hatate. it looks like he's going to be out for a few weeks, he'll miss the game at Ibrooks. Um, I think Stephen McGowan reported yesterday um, that he does look like he's going to be out for, for three or four weeks. I think that's a blow for us. Um, OK, it might present an opportunity for Odin Thiago home uh, to start in these big games we've got coming up. But I know Hatati didn't start in the first two league games this season, but 
I think he's key for as you see the impact he makes even in 15 minutes on Sunday. Uh, much calmer on the ball, his range of passing is excellent. Um, gets around the second balls as well. I think that's something that Brendan Rodgers cited as a reason for bringing him on as well. How tenacious he can be in the middle of the park. Um, so that's a huge blow for us. But in terms of his contract, we've seen Kyogo extend. We've seen Dyson Maeda extend. Um, Rio Hatate is the last one um, that we would really like to see extend his contract because there remains that doubt there. Um, I know that he joined in the January with Maeda, um, but I think nailing him down to a new contract um, would give us that security that he's at least going to be here um, for another season, or at the very least another six months. Um, you never know with, with these things in football, but he's a key player for us, and I think a new contract would at least, again, protect the value that we've got in him because you don't want it to get to a standoff where he doesn't want to sign a contract and then it runs down and that starts to deplete the fee that the club can command as well. Same for Abada. Um, he's been linked with Sporting Lisbon, Ajax, Fenerbahce, a range of European clubs seem to have been sniffing about Liel Abada. And again, it looks like he could really, really contribute under Brendan Rodgers. He could improve um, the wide areas, such a key uh, part of the team for Rodgers. Uh, and I think Lee Alabada can really improve under his guidance. But getting them to sign new contracts would hopefully give us some reassurance that they're going to be with us for, for the rest of this campaign and sort of quell the speculation there's been around both of them uh, throughout the summer. So there you go. Let's hope Lager Bielka is the first of many in this last couple of weeks of the window. I think there's going to be lots of movement in and out of Celtic in the next couple of weeks. There's some trimming we need to do to the squad. As Myla Soros linked with a move away, I think it's to Valenciennes. Um, there's a lot of dead wood there in the squad that isn't involved at all. So I think we have to move those players out. But more importantly, we have to try and get those one or two quality additions that can go and improve the first 11 uh, immediately. I think that's what we need to round off this transfer window and for everybody to be content with it. So you can let me know what you think about everything discussed in the video below. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're getting closer to 39,000. The quicker we can get there, the better. And we will see you on Friday for the build-up to Kilmarnock away on Sunday. Thank you.